What's up guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Tom. I'm an Open University student studying computing and IT. And yes, if you watched the last video, I'm wearing the same clothes. And that is because I'm recording them both at the same time. I made a joke about how it's been two months from my last video. So I'm making sure I have at least two videos recorded in the same time. So yes, so avoid my, excuse my um, same attire. But uh, yeah. Anyway, today's video I will be talking about the top common questions I get either through the comment section, through Instagram DMs, Twitter DMs, whatever DMs. Um, they're not particularly in any sort of order of like commonness or whatever. Um, and I've also purposely made them all kind of vague as the vast majority of people um, obviously ask from their personal perspective. Um, and I don't want to really like out anyone's personal life or anything like that. So yeah, I'm just going to talk through some common questions I get, answer them and hopefully I can help for someone else. <laughs> this is going terribly. Anyway, the first question, is it a real degree? Uh, yes, it's a real degree. That, it's a degree. Um, whether the the next common question to go along with is it a real degree is will a degree from open university um let me down or put me in a worse spot than someone who has a degree from a typical university now it depends how you go about that how you want to twist that many say and i agree that when you say you've got an open uni open university degree you can turn that into more of a positive than someone who has a standard degree from a typical university. And that's because you have gone out of your way to apply and do a degree around work, around your life. You can show that you've got commitment, you've got self-motivation. Because let's face it, open university degree, 99% of the time you're doing it by yourself in your room, your office, whatever. There's um you know there's no one really pushing you. Your tutor might might email me email you <laughs> if you miss a assessment or whatever. But you know nine ninety nine percent of the time no one's checking up on you. No one's making sure you're doing your work. You're doing that yourself, and you can t you can tell that to an employer and show that you are very self motivated. And it's very hard to do that when you compare yourself to someone who's at a normal university who is surrounded by other people sees their tutor several times a week. Um, again, their tutor might not necessarily be keep making sure they're doing the work, but they have more support than what we do as Open University students. So you can turn that into a positive um, when comparing yourself to other people from typical universities. You've just got to point that out to an employer. Um, they are, it's written off here, OU has many credit degrees which are accredited by third-party institutes such as Chartered Institute for IT. So there is plenty of degrees out there that are just as accredited as any other degree. You just do it from home. That's that. You do it from home and you do it by yourself. And you do it around the rest of your life. That's that. The next common question is, do I have to do exams? Or how many exams do I have to do? Um, Chances are you will have to do at least one exam at some point through your degree. The amount of exams you do is completely dependent on what modules you choose. The, the most of the majority, the most of the modules I've seen don't have exams. However, you might be in a situation like I was in my first year, where I had two a choice of two mandatory modules, even my math modules, and both math modules had an exam at the end. So I had to pick one of those two and either one had an exam. So in that sense, I had to do an exam that year. Um, but from that one, uh, but the most majority of the mandatory ones don't have exams. Um, again, it completely depended on what modules you choose. You might prefer to do exams or you might also put that with the modules that you choose. I don't know. Um, I would just say that try not to choose a module based on whether it's got an exam or not you know just um just do read through the modules that you want to do and then do them if they've got an exam they've got an exam 
they try to put you in an exam centre that's close to you as possible. Um, I've said this many times before, but I live in Wakefield. Um, they tried to place me first time in a hotel in Leeds, um, but I postponed my maths to the next year, and that would have been Bradford the next year, which is fairly close to me as well. And the two exams that I should have done last year um, were both in the same place in Bradford as well. So they do try to keep it as close to you as possible. So don't worry about having to like travel across the country to just do an exam. And also just out of um, context, if I had done all my exams that I was supposed to have done, uh, I would have, basically after the end of this year as well, I would have gotten a degree by doing three exams. Um, there's definitely modules out there that I haven't done that do do exams, so I could have very easily have done six, but um, just, I don't know. I would say I expect, expect at least three, expect at least one exam per year of the degree. That's what I would say. Now, another popular one I get is questions about credit transfers. Um, some people have done a year at a university and want to transfer to an open university one. A lot of people, because open university doesn't have any entry requirements, want to do one year at OU and then transfer to another university and asking me whether that's a possibility. Now, from looking on an open university website, I know that Open University do accept credit transfers from other universities to Open University. So if that's an option, yes, go for it. Um, as far as I know, OU shouldn't have any issues. When going from OU to another university, I don't know because I've not done it. My suggestion would be to contact the university you want to transfer to and say what you are planning on doing and then seeing if they will accept that or not. I mean, they should, because 30 credits is 30 credits. It's just they might want you to do a minimum amount of credits before you transfer, or make sure you're doing applicable modules before you transfer, I don't know. But my best bet would be just to just talk to the university you want to transfer to. If you're not sure which one that is, talk to a few. Um, and just make sure that it's okay with them before, because the last thing you want to do is sign up to know you do the first year and then get turned down because you've not done this sort of module or you haven't done enough credits or whatever. Do you have to use a PC or Mac or Linux machine or Google Chromebook or something? Um, yes, basically you do. Um, I can get a lot done with my tablet. I have an iPad. Get a lot done with that, um, but there is still some things that I can't do. Obviously, I'm doing a computing and IT degree. So I do have a lot of software to download, which simply won't work on an iPad or a phone or whatever. So I have a PC for that. Um, obviously, you don't need the fanciest PC. I'll be talking about PC specs in a second. Um, but you will need a PC at some point. You can do all your notes and even like your TMAs and stuff, handwritten, and then scan them in or whatever. But you will need to, at some point, send your documents through the online EMA TMA system. Um, typically, I think EMAs, I think EMAs have to be sent in digitally. I might be wrong about that, but um, yeah, just be prepared that you will have to do something um, on your computer at some point. So even though you might not have a computer now, I would I would get one or at least set one up before you do open university. You will need one eventually. So talking about PC specs, this is going off of Open University's website what they expect as a PC spec. Yeah, to run Windows 7 Plus or later, OS 10.8 or later if you're Mac. Um advise not to use Linux as some software doesn't run on it. So maybe you have a Linux based system and maybe you can use some a virtual machine to run Windows. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't really, <laughs> I don't really use Linux. I've used Linux for a little bit as part of one of my modules through a virtual machine. Um, but yeah, you are advised not to use Linux. So maybe you might need a backup if you've already got a Linux machine. Um, run a modern browser such as Chrome, Firefox, Safari, etc. That's pretty standard. I think everyone's using them now. Um, display needs to be at least ten. 1024 by 768 
So uh, a little bit over 720p. Um, I presume that's to make sure everything is shown correctly on your monitor. Again, I feel like everyone's got 1080p monitors these days. Um, in fact, no, that is... <laughs> That's a weird resolution. Anyway, yeah. Just make sure you've got a fairly up-to-date modern display. Uh, typically, even old or cheaper laptops will have a viable display, so don't worry too much about that. They also say to have speakers, headphones, and microphone to participate in tutorials properly. Uh, that is because through Adobe Connect, you might very well, obviously, need headphones to listen, and you might be asked to talk through the microphone. Um, I haven't talked in a tutorial, but you might need to. So it's better to just have some sort of microphone. Obviously, if you've got like a laptop or using your phone to view the tutorials, they've all got microphones been built. But if you've got a desktop, just make sure you've got some sort of microphone. It does not have to be anything fancy. Um, I think they advise just a little headset mic or just one of those cheap 10, 50 pound headphones. I have a little mic on that just sound very tinny, but that's all you need. You just need some basic. So don't worry about having to get the fanciest microphone ever. The next common question is how to sign up and pay. Um, you sign up through for the course through Open University and you can pay in a various ways. You can just pay just straight outright out your own bank. Uh, but the vast majority of people do get stu uh, student loans. Um, you also could get your company to pay if they are pushing you through to do the to do the course in the first place they might very well pay for it um, obviously you'll know that if that's possible but yeah most people pay through student loans um, when you do apply for a student loan it is through the part-time one um, don't worry about the initial um, quoted amount you can borrow you can borrow enough to study full-time um, I think it like says like three thousand and something you can borrow but you can then adjust it and go to above what OU charge for full-time. So don't worry about that and don't worry about the idea of studying full-time but then applying for a part-time loan. It's fine. It's just all through part-time. Not sure why, but it is. <laughs> and last but not least is I have been out of education for a while sort of question. I've had people say, you know, I got blah 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 grades. Is that okay or should I work on this first and get that up or you know whatever so basically open university doesn't have any entry requirements so that means even if you've got you know pretty poor grades at GCSE or O levels or whatever you, you can still apply and should in theory get onto the course whether you're ready or not is completely up to you um, I've had people say that you know at school I didn't really listen did this did that didn't do that well but now I'm in a much better place to do it. That's fine, it's just completely up to you. Um, there's no way I could tell you whether you're ready or not to do your module. Um, there's no way, I don't think Open University can tell you if you're ready or not. Just think about studying, whether you can fit the study time in, um, look up the modules beforehand, see what they're about, look them up online, maybe watch a couple of tutorials and that sort of stuff. Um, especially like maths ones, there's plenty of websites out there will teach you all sorts about maths. Um, that was a common one. I think that they're not sure about the math module. Um, just look, just look up all the topics online and see which one, see what you need to work on. You can begin before the module starts. Um, yeah, it's very hard for anyone else to tell you if you're okay to do the module. Year one modules are pretty straightforward from my experience. And then they do slowly just creep up and up. So even if you need time to just get into the groove of things, the first few months of year one tend to be that little just getting up to speed. It's out of nice and easy and it just gets gets going. So don't worry, you won't be like just chucked in the deep end by any time. So, but yeah, I think those are probably the most common questions I've got. That's ones I've put down anyway. So I'll just a quick rundown. Is it a real degree? Yes, it's a real degree. Don't worry about having a employer turn the notes for you for having an open university degree um, you can turn that positive by again saying you've been self-determined self-motivated you got it done by yourself it proves a lot of things that other university students can't necessarily prove 
Um, do you have to do exams? Probably, like 90% of the time, you're going to have to do an exam at some point through your degree. Again, I would have done three exams had I had to do all my exams. Um, and that's for a full degree. So I probably might have got away with just doing one exam had I picked different modules. So, credit transfers. OU accepts credit transfers. So, just get in contact with OU and make sure it's okay. Um, and if you're going elsewhere, get in contact with that other university before open before signing up to Open University because you don't want to waste a year and finding out it's not okay for whatever reasons. Do you have to use a PC, Mac, etc.? Eventually, you will have to. Submitting coursework is very difficult through your phone, and plus there's a lot of online stuff that yes, you can access through your phones and tablets, but it just it just runs that bit nicer on a desktop. And I feel like sometimes sitting at a desktop might just get you in the mood more to study. So yeah, you will need some sort of PC. You don't have to have end of the world one. You don't have to have, you don't have to have some like amazing PC. Um, like I say, you just need basic, fairly up to date operating system, fairly standard display, and that's that. All the software I've used runs very easily and runs on low spec. Um, so, yeah, don't worry about that. How to sign up and pay. Sign up for the module through the Open University website. You can pay straight out of your pocket, get your company to pay, or you can sign up through student loans. And I've been out of education for a while, blah, 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 blah. Take some initiative, look through the modules, and just make sure, be realistic with yourself. Don't say, oh, it'll be fine, and then find out you don't have time to study because you're working full-time, and blah, blah, blah. Um, just take on what you can and I think that's I think that's pretty much it that's probably the top comment what is that seven questions something like that seven questions that's probably my most common questions if there's some other questions you want to ask me feel free to DM me on Instagram Twitter ask in the comments section whichever um, I will answer what I can and uh, yeah thank you so much for watching I hope this has been helpful and I will see you in the next video in a bit.